Let's look at configuring Cisco switches to use VLANs. So what are VLANs? VLANs are virtual local area networks. So if you have a switch, you can connect lots of devices to the switch and it divides that area and divides the um, what is it, collision domain up so that individual devices are not talking directly to each other. The electronic signals from one wire are not affecting the signals on a different wire. So switches kind of clean things up. They also do filtering based on MAC address so that you only hear traffic that is really destined to go to you or broadcast traffic, which you probably don't want, or maybe you do want it. I don't know. The switches are great, um, but sometimes you want, you want two switches and you only have one switch and you want to be able to divide things out. Or maybe you have something more complex. Maybe you want to have uh, half of one switch for one LAN and then a different switch, you want half of that same, or a different switch to be that original same LAN. So you can do all kinds of combination things. So let's take a look at the switch and how to configure VLANs. All right, so I am going to go into privilege mode and I can look at show VLAN. I can see how my VLANs are currently configured. The default VLAN is VLAN number one. So everything on this switch, all the interfaces on this switch, all the traffic is listed as being part of VLAN one. I can create additional VLANs or different VLANs. And then these VLANs can be well, assigned to individual interfaces. And then anything on that interface will be in that LAN. Okay. So let's go ahead and make two LANs, two VLANs. So, uh, let's say that um, from ports FA02 to, let's see, halfway, about 12, 2 to 12, we're going to have as VLAN 10, and 13 to 24, we're going to have as VLAN 20. And then we're going to use fast Ethernet 01, gigabit Ethernet 01, and gigabit Ethernet, Ethernet 02 are all going to be marked as trunking ports. We'll talk about trunking ports in a moment. So how do we configure these? What you can do is configure each, each one of these ports one at a time if you want. So you can do int fa0 slash 2. You go in there and you say it's going to be a switch port access the lamb and we say it's VLAN 10 <coughs> and that's it it says VLAN doesn't exist so it's creating it there we go we have, now have VLAN 10 all right well then you can say well I want to do interface number two so in FA zeros or three and you do switch port access VLAN 10. And this can take a long time if you're doing this one at a time. So we're not going to do that. We can do int range and we do fast Ethernet 0. Well, we get it done all at once. So 0 slash 2 through 12. And now we can do switch port access. VLAN 10. So all of them have now been set to VLAN 10. Exit out of the range. And then I can do int range fast Ethernet 0, 13 through 24. Do switch port access VLAN 20. And it creates VLAN 20. And now I X out of this and X out again. Let's we'll show our VLAN. And we can see now we have a list of interfaces that are assigned to each of the VLANs. So VLAN 10 has all of these interfaces 2 through 12, and VLAN 20 has 13 through 24. And there we go.
Now we want a trunking port. A trunking port carries multiple VLANs. And this can be important because when you communicate <clears throat> the traffic, the traffic from VLAN 10 is only on VLAN 10. So if you wanted a router, for example, your router would have to be connected for the VLAN 10 would have to be connected to one of those ports 2 through 12 if you wanted it to be able to talk to the devices and for that to be the default gateway for devices in that subnet or that VLAN. So each of these VLANs is a separate subnet or network. If you make a trunking port then it can carry multiple multiple VLANs and you can have a single router act as the default gateway for multiple VLANs. Um, that you probably want to look at the router and the stick demonstration, which should be up later. All right, so now I want to configure VLAN 1 to be a trunking port. So I go comp t in fa0 slash 1, and we do a switch port um, mode trunk. It's really kind of uh, it. it kind of just works at that point. Um, yep. All right. So now we want to also configure the gigabit Ethernet. So int gigabit Ethernet. Actually, int range gigabit Ethernet zero slash one through two. And we'll make these trunking ports as well. Switch port mode trunk. All right. Sometimes you want to set the encapsulation um, and, uh, well, we use uh, the dot one Q and that refers to the, well, the, The standard there. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so this will get you your switch configured and then you are ready to go. So let's take a look at the running configuration. You can see that these are all configured. Well, this one's configured as trunk, these ones are configured VLAN 10, and these ones are configured as VLAN 20. Sometimes you also want to add some kind of a description. Um, sometimes you want to have your device have an IP address in that range, and so we can do that. So we'll do comp t, we'll do int vlan 10. And if I wanted to assign myself an IP address in that, I could do IP address, let's clear that out first, IP address, so 192.168.0. Maybe I'll switch to be 254, with a mask of 255, 255, 255, 0. And that's an IP address now in that range. I can also do a description. Maybe this is my uh, accounting VLAN. All right. Now I go over to the VLAN 20 in VLAN, VLAN 20, and I give it an IP address, IP address 192.168.1.254.255.255.255.0. I assign myself an IP address, and I also give it a description. And instead of counting, maybe this is a manage. No matter what you call it. And exit all that. You can see the running configuration. So on these things right here, one thing you might notice um, is I didn't have to activate the ports because they're already active. I don't have to worry about act 
activating these VLANs because they're already activated. I don't need to worry about a node shutdown. They're just there. That's how switches work. Now, if I want things to work all the way, it's usually good to have some device plugged into one of the interfaces to make it work completely. But that's all you need to do. And that's how you configure VLANs on Cisco switches.